Tyke here again, and yes, yes, by popular demand, it's a video putting Rhine to the test against Turnitin's brand spanking new AI detector. On the 27th of August, 2025, Turnitin released an update to their AI detector that they claim can detect AI bypasser tools. What they're talking about is that their new and improved AI detector can supposedly detect writing produced by humanizers, which, as I'm sure you know, is the common name for tools that can modify AI writing so that it will not be flagged by AI detectors. I made a video about Turnitin's new AI detector right away. It's linked on screen now if you want to check that out. While my subscribers really appreciated that video and the information that it contained, I got a lot of requests to test Ryan against it next. And I listen to what my subscribers have to say, and I respond as quickly as I can. If you have a question or a request, let me know in the comments, and I'll answer it, or create a video as soon as I can. Whether or not you have a comment or question, I appeal to you, dear viewer, to like this video, to help me grow my little channel, and subscribe if you haven't already. Your support really matters to me, and I'd appreciate you sharing the channel with someone who you think it might interest. I think it's fair to say that Ryan is the most popular humanizer among subscribers to this channel. Historically, it's been one of the best tools that I've tested. However, in a video about Ryan's hyper mode that I recorded in March 2025, I found that I was very disappointed with their new feature, and it couldn't pass copy leaks AI detector. This is regarded by researchers as one of the most accurate on the market. Ryan was was also a little disappointing in a battle of the AI humanizers video I made that month where I put it head to head against Stealth Writer. So that brings us up to date. Ryan's most recent humanizer update was the 23rd of July and we've got a brand new Turnitin AI detector. What we're going to do in this video is use ChatGPT5 to write an essay. We're going to use Ryan to humanize it. We're going to humanize the ChatGPT essay again using Ryan's hyper mode. We're going to use Ryan's AI report feature to see what scores we get for these three documents. We're going to see what AI scores we get with Turnitin for these three documents. And we're going to evaluate the quality of the ChatGPT essay and the two Ryan humanized versions. If that sounds good to you, please stick around to the end. The first thing that we're going to do is use the free version of ChatGPT to write a 1,500 word essay about whether the Rhine AI humanizer and its regular and hyper mode functionality can bypass the Turnitin AI detector. The essay will consider some of the implications for students and universities. We want the essay to have in-text citations in the author or authors and year format. We don't want links and we want a reference list formatted in the APA style. We want our essay written in the format of a university essay. We clarify that the reference list is not included in the word count. Look at ChatGPT go. When ChatGPT is done, we paste the text into this document here. The essay is 1,552 words without the reference list and 1,617 including the reference list. Next, we go to the Rhine website. Did you know that they're the only genuine tool? No cap. You can tell they're for real because they're using Gen Z slang. And they're still claiming to be the best AI humanizer. We get a video when we get to the humanizer page and it's saying that it's been difficult lately to pass Turnitin and GPT-0. This video is from November 2024. Whatever. We're testing Ryan right now. Today. Ryan still claimed to have a 100% Turnitin bypass rate. We'll paste the ChatGPT essay into the humanizer and use the English general writing style, general content type, 50% creative, the same length as the original, 50% word preservation, 85% semantic preservation, and 75% style mimicking settings. These are fairly close to the default settings. We then hit humanize and it takes about 15 seconds for the humanizer to transform the original ChatGPT essay. We'll paste the humanize essay into this document here. It's 1,642 words in total. 
Next, we're going to humanize the ChatGPT essay again using the hyper mode feature this time. This costs 18 cent per use and supposedly bypasses even the most sensitive AI detectors. We'll see about that. We accept the terms and conditions and hyper mode takes about 10 seconds to run. We'll paste the output into this document here. This version is 1,678 words in length. We've got three documents, the ChatGPT essay, the Rhine humanized essay, and the hypermode humanized essay. We're going to use Rhine's AI report feature to see if we can learn what our Turnitin AI score is likely to be. The AI report feature claims to give us our AI score for Turnitin, GPT-0, Originality, and Rila. Rila is a free tool created by Rhine, so that's not far-fetched. Ryan must have API access for Originality and GPT-0. However, the Turnitin AI detector can't be accessed in this way. So Ryan's predictive model guesses what the score is likely to be. For the ChatGPT essay, Ryan predicts the Turnitin AI score is likely to be 22%. For the Ryan humanized essay, Ryan predicts the Turnitin AI score is likely to be 0%. That might have been true up until the 27th of August, 2025, but is it true now? Could Ryan have introduced updates to make sure that their AI report feature can guess AI scores for Turnitin's updated AI detector model? Or were any updates even necessary? No updates are reported on the Ryan change log. We'll find out if Ryan can still predict Turnitin AI scores soon. The hypermode humanized essays predicted Turnitin AI score is also 0% likely AI. Well, we'll see about that as we run each of these documents through the real deal Turnitin AI detector. For the original ChatGPT essay, we get a 5% similarity score. This part of Turnitin shows which parts of a submission students may have plagiarized. For this document, the score is 5% of the text and the parts that are flagged are either in the reference list or are this direct quotation. Not a problem. AI writing tends to achieve low plagiarism scores as it's not copying others' work. It's generating words in a statistically probable pattern based on training data. Connecting this remix of words with the original sources is almost impossible. The AI score is 22%. Hey, that's the same as what Ryan's AI report feature predicted it would be. It's interesting that part of the work that is flagged is this numbered list. Usually the Turnitin AI detector isn't so good with numbered lists. With the Ryan humanized text, we get a 0% similarity score. Nothing is flagged as plagiarized in this document. The AI score is also 0%, likely AI. Wow, I'm very impressed. Ryan seems to be robust to the updates with Turnitin's new AI detector. Are you surprised? Whether you are or whether you aren't, tell me what you think in the comments. And give me a like and subscribe while you're down there, please. With the Hypermode essay, we get a 0% similarity score, of course, and a 0% likely AI score too. Incredible. Before I say that Ryan is the king of the humanizers, we need to evaluate the quality of the writing. You can check out all the documents that I generated and tested in this video by following the link in the description, if that kind of thing interests you. So we can only really evaluate the ChatGPT essay for its quality. We'll give it a rating. The humanized and hypermode essays will also get a rating, though this will be based on the extent to which they preserve the meaning of the original ChatGPT essay and the language flows with minimal errors. The first thing that we're going to do is check the reference list to see if these sources actually exist. There are only four of them, and yes, all of them are real. However, one is just the Ryan website and the Guardian article was published before the new Turnitin AI detector was introduced. This reference list wouldn't be great for university work, where students would be expected to cite research published in academic journals, and four sources is a very low number that doesn't demonstrate much effort. Let's check out the body of the document. We've got an M a dead giveaway of AI writing. Some of the writing doesn't seem very natural for an undergraduate student, like by applying stronger perturbations. Parts of the text being formatted in bold. Another dead giveaway of AI writing. Overall, the essay is okay. 
It doesn't have a lot of substance, but it is a decent summary of Rhyme. The features that they offer, their claims about efficacy, and some of the implications of AI in higher education. It's funny to note that ChatGPT doesn't think that Rhyme humanized text or hypermode are guaranteed to bypass Turnitin's AI detector. I'm giving this essay a 7 out of 10 for quality. Next, let's check out the Rhyme humanized essay. Yes, this got a 0% likely AI score with Turnitin, but that's easy to do with a load of nonsense. Does this essay make any sense? Did it preserve the meaning of the original ChatGPT essay? Is it readable? So we've got a mistake here. The in-text citation is not correct, and both the author and year are not inside the brackets. This is plausible enough for a student error. Turn it in 2025 says that the August 2025 snapshot. What? This doesn't make any sense. Words have been switched for inappropriate synonyms here. This part again has been changed so that it is more confusing than the original. It sees itself as one tool in an extended ecosystem, so it asks professors to review. This is about educators ultimately having to judge whether a student's work is authentic. We've still got the word perturbations, though this time it is in an even more unnatural sentence that doesn't sound like a student, let alone a human. And it is possible that the more radical style perturbations could reduce a detector's confidence in AI origin at times. The detection systems of an in-arm adversary. What the heck? Turnitin's August fix namelessly targets following the patterns of top humanizers. Again, more confusing writing that's really hard to follow. Surveys and informal tests in the public domain suggest that the more a text is manipulated in order to avoid detection, the more likely it is to be unnatural or contain errors that would be detectable by an instructor by inspection. Yeah, that is true. Even parts of this humanized essay are so unnatural that I would be asking questions of the student who submitted it. Despite the 0% AI score, whether or not a given humanizer habitually avoids turn it in. Another example of unnatural, odd writing. Increasing the chances of instance of illegitimate work with the aid of AI. Uh, yes, otherwise known as cheating. According to commercial humanizers, the type of evasion being used is waylay language. This is nonsense. This is not a commonly accepted term. There is nothing like this in the original ChatGPT essay. The inclusion of something like this would make markers highly suspicious, especially as there is no citation. According to Ryan 2025 and others, vendors claim you can bypass security. More nonsense when referring to AI detection. This essay was okay, it was fine. There were parts that were very confusing and it would definitely make me suspicious if I were marking it for real. I'd be emailing the student and asking them how they wrote and researched the essay and whether they had any evidence of this. I'd be asking them where they got the term waylay language from too. I'm giving this a 5 out of 10 for retaining the meaning and flow of the original ChatGPT version. Finally, let's evaluate the quality of the hypermode version of the essay. As investigations face limitations, there may be portions of the examination that I cannot provide evidence-based information upon. Right off the bat, we've hit some very unnatural sounding writing. This sentence, with its odd choice of words, would be enough to raise suspicions for many educators. It just doesn't sound natural or human. And more human-like disfluency. This is a very confusing and unnecessarily complex way of expressing a simple idea. We'll beat the turn it in detector across assignment types and writing styles. Rhyme, no comma, 2025 on page 32. This is another what the heck are you talking about moment. What about page 32? There is nothing like this in the original, and though there is a direct quotation, this source is a website, which obviously does not have page numbers. We've got this horrible sentence again. It's possible that more extreme style perturbations might sometimes undermine a detector's confidence in AI origin. This is cute. Turn it in isn't capitalized here. That's a real Gen Z move. Not capitalizing words or proper nouns. So I'm going to say that introducing errors of this nature is totally plausible. Very confusing writing here. It is fair to say that hypermode may sometimes bypass some automated signals. Ah yes, those automated signals. To enhance the clarity of acceptable AI use as well as any sections or remediation, 
institutions should update their honor codes. Who the heck says honor codes? Oral component assessments requiring UIQA local data. Now this is just a blatant spelling mistake. This was unique local data in the original ChatGPT version. Turnitin's August 2025 update is too weak to be believable. This standard of writing is very poor. Ryan and other companies such as that Jeffrey C. Kruger that sell bypasses claiming they succeed in getting around the standard and hyper is just gibberish. I don't even think this Jeffrey C. Kruger character actually exists. He's not showing up in a Google search. The essay is devolving into nonsense now. Rushing one such industry claim bypasses level full stop 2025 full stop. The immediate practical implication is they should fuse technology with sound policy, unnecessarily breaking up a sentence here. I'm giving this essay a 2 out of 10. It got far too confusing. The meaning of the original was lost for large portions and the flow was totally broken. Critically, the work was suspicious as heck and many of the mistakes didn't seem plausible for any undergraduate student that I teach. What did we learn from all of that? None of the essays were within the permitted word count for our essay. The original ChatGPT essay was 52 words too long. The Ryan Humanizer added another 90 words. And the Hypermode essay clocked in at 1,678 words nearly 200 words longer than was permitted. No matter which version of the essay we wanted to submit, we'd have to do some editing. The Ryan AI report feature remains totally accurate and can tell you your Turnitin AI score. This is a great feature for students. ChatGPT5 continues to get low Turnitin AI detector scores with the new model. In this limited test, we got a score of 22% for a GPT-5 essay. Despite claiming that the updated AI detector will flag bypasser tools, Turnitin flagged nothing in an essay humanized by the standard Ryan humanizer or by the hypermode feature. However, humanizing the original ChatGPT essay significantly reduced the quality quality of the work and made it seem unnatural and suspicious. While the version of the essay humanized using the standard humanizer was satisfactory enough, the hypermode version of the essay was borderline nonsense in places. If you made it to the end, you definitely owe me a like. Please share this video with anyone who you think would be interested, whether they're an educator like me or a student trying to navigate the confusing landscape of AI in higher education. I'd really appreciate it. If you've been watching for this long, I'm sure that you've subscribed, but if you haven't yet, you know what to do. This is the only reputable channel that considers AI in higher education on YouTube. Please show me your support. I don't do affiliate links or paid promotions, and I barely get a cent compared to larger channels that are run by hacks who can barely speak English, have nothing to do with higher education, or are trying to trick you with false information and affiliate links. And that's the end. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.